I've been trying to compile a timeline of console online gaming, and here's what I've got so far. Now did you know that the Philips CDI had its own internet service? And even an online gaming service? How did I do it? Same way as I solve everything. Go surfing. Surfing on the internet. Now, I know what you think. The net. It's only for cybernauts and anorex. Wrong. Now you can get on it through your TV set and CDI player. After hooking up a modem and being introduced to it by this guy, you could select game and play RAM Raid. It's a first person shooter in which people compete against each other and then go on to fighting against the boss, known as the RAM. That's the computer term and not the animal. RAM Raid was online only, but the servers were not up for a very long time due to the unpopularity of the CDI. <laughs> the game looks similar to Wolfenstein 3D, but more pixelated. The concept is that you're inside a computer, which is kind of cool, I guess. Kind of like Tron. What's amazing to me is that the CDI could even handle this kind of game. I mean, there were many things the CDI wasn't good at, but the thing it was worst at, I think, was 3D. So this game feels like a technical marvel. There are some offline practice arenas to play through without needing to connect to the internet, which is good because without them, I wouldn't be able to review this at all. The game itself, it's pretty boring. Ugly, indescribable enemies, meh weapons, and confusing levels. I have to applaud it though for having a map screen, something Wolfenstein didn't have. The control is fine, and you can strafe by holding down button 2. The control isn't given any favors though by the CDI controller. You have to use button 2 to cycle through weapons or go to the map screen, as well as strafing and pressing buttons to open doors. Button 1 is only used to shoot. This setup kinda reminds me of... In the following year though, in 1997, Philips remade the game and released it as Atlantis The Last Resort. Atlantis is only offline and uses the same control scheme as Ram Raid. It has more levels, a lot more than Ram Raid. It has a story and some FMV scenes with very primitive looking CGI. But I like the Ray Harryhausen looking skeletons. On the back of the cover, the game's story is summed up nicely. The parole officer has just made you an offer you cannot refuse. Shut down the reactor at the heart of the Atlantis Resort, and you can have your freedom. You reply, where's my rocket launcher? 20 levels of mindless blasting! That's pretty funny, but I wouldn't exactly call it mindless blasting. I was stuck on the first level for a long time because I couldn't find the key to the exit, even with the map. It's hard to navigate in this game. The weapon that draws my attention is a rocket launcher. It looks like a cigarette. It does have a password system, which is a godsend. With it, I can see beyond the first few levels. There's also three difficulty levels, each with their individual passwords. Both games were well produced, I think. No major flaws and it feels all around well made. Well made for their circumstances. But let's face it, Philips CDI just isn't the right platform for these games. But it's still impressive that they were even possible to make. Even if the games themselves aren't very fun to play.